everyone, welcome back to my channel for another tutorial. Today I'm finally doing that one that you guys have been requesting for so long that you've seen on Patreon. It is of Venice Beach Canals in uh, California. So I'm super excited to recreate this one for you. The original I painted many years ago on a huge five feet by five feet canvas. It's, it hangs on my wall and now I'm going to be rendering it for you guys recreating it on an 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. I've got the following colors I'm gonna be using for this painting today. However, you can use any other colors that you like. If you're not sure what ones to use, just ask in the comments below and I'll be happy to give you some alternatives or color recipes to make them. Starting off with a uh, light olive green. I've got a little bit of phthalo green, a little bit of primary yellow or lemon yellow, blue turquoise, cadmium red, magenta, Burnt Umber, Dioxazine Purple. I know this looks black. A lot of people um, forget to check out the full list of colors and just think that that's black. So please, please look thoroughly through the list of colors and listen carefully so you don't use black because there's a huge difference. <laughs> so the Dioxazine Purple is a really beautiful, rich color that I like to use instead of black um, for my landscapes and many other paintings. And then finally, we've got some titanium white. Now, my palette is a bit of a mess right now from all the paintings I've been doing lately. Um, what I'd like to do when I have leftover paint is just cover it with some tin foil and put it in a cool area, a cooler uh, or a fridge. So I had this in my fridge overnight and uh, uh, it's still wet, just like when I first squeeze it out. So there's a little tip for you guys. Another little tip for keeping your acrylics from drying out too fast is a little spray bottle. Have it set to fine mist and just slightly mist your palette and your canvas before you start painting, which takes me to the next step. I'm just gonna wet this canvas down and then we're gonna start painting. I'm gonna be using my set of brushes today. Uh, I'll show you the box unopened right now so you guys can see um, what it looks like. I have the official dates set for my unboxing video and then the live launch where you'll be able to order your own set they ship worldwide. There's a limited amount, limited supply. There's a ton of people that have already been on the waiting list to get these, so don't miss out. I'll have a link below here that you guys can click on to pre-order, pre-sign up, or if it's later than that date, and this is like uh, a year later, um, you can purchase them unless they've sold out. Maybe by that time I'll have another set available. Um, but this is what the box looks like. Okay, so one of my, and there's a tutorial for this painting as well. So I've teamed up and collaborated with the amazing company, Craftimo. Okay, so I'll be unboxing these for the first time live with you guys um, or through live chat on uh, May, well, have the, I forget the date now. I'll have it down below in the, in the description box though, but the official release launch date to purchase these is May 21st, 9 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, only here on my channel. Okay, now let's begin this painting. Added a little bit of water just to make the canvas slippery and help my acrylics just glide seamlessly over the canvas. It's gonna make it really easy for you guys to learn how to paint acrylics when you uh, use this little tip that I've just mentioned. The first thing I wanna do is start working on the background. So with a landscape, you wanna work background to foreground. You can approach it any way you like. There really are no rules. However, if you're just beginning, this is gonna be the easiest way to do it. So I wanna use a little bit of, and I've got my flat brush here, a number 20 flat brush, uh, and a little bit of blue turquoise. I'm gonna put my brush in the water after I load it and just start pulling and spreading that paint around. So I took this photo, you'll uh, be able to access the reference photo for free on Patreon. Um, and I took the photo years ago, I mean, maybe about 10 years ago with my kids and husband when we visited California. First and only time I've ever been there. And uh, was, I think this is my favorite spot that we visited. I thought it was so pretty. So I took quite a few pictures and then painted it, like I mentioned earlier, on a really large five feet by five feet canvas. And I've had, uh, I've used it for like my um, profile photo for a long time on Patreon and other places. And a lot of you guys are asking, where's the tutorial? I really want to paint that. And I've had more requests for this painting than any other painting. So 
I promised you guys I would get around to doing it, and today is that day. So I'm just gonna keep adding a little bit of water, a little bit of white, and that blue. I'm gonna go right down because we've got the sky up here that's this color, but it's reflecting over the canals here. So it's mirroring it a little bit, right? So we'll just add a little bit down here. There's another color that um, I'm gonna be adding. I wanted to wait until now to put it on my palette because um, my neon paints actually dry out a lot quicker than the regular acrylic paints. So I'm gonna be taking some neon orange and where's a clean place? I'll just add it right there. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is take some white without washing my brush off. And I'm just gonna start adding these little scoops for the clouds in the sky. Keeping it just really loose, simple, simple brush strokes. Everyone thinks they need to be really careful and um, super detailed with their clouds. And that always ends up making people frustrated painting clouds. The tip is looser and messier, a little carefree. Don't think about it so much, just scoop along and then a soft blend. So scoop, 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 and then a little pull. Now what I'm gonna be adding to the next layer of my clouds, I'm gonna be tinting my white with a little bit of, a um, little bit of purple, a little bit of orange. This is just the first layer. And then come down here, add a little bit of white for the clouds reflecting in the water. I'm painting this on a different size canvas. The proportions are gonna be different in this one than the original because uh, the photograph is uh, square. I cropped it square and I painted it on a square. Um, so it'll be interesting for me and a little exciting for me to do it differently with different proportions this time, stretched out a little bit on this 11 by 14 canvas. Okay, I'm gonna wash my brush out and I'm gonna dry this off. And we'll come in and pull in a little bit of orange and white and a little bit of the purple. Okay, I'm gonna go over to my filbert brush next and I'm gonna take a little bit of white and dioxazine purple. I'm also going to pull in just a little bit of the burnt umber. A little bit more white and just a tiny bit of that blue. We're gonna make sort of a muted lavender color rather than gray. If you were just to look at the reference photo and you'll see it on Patreon, um, you'll think that it's gray, but I always see more, and I think just artists do in general, we see more colors than what are, what are there and what everybody else sees. And this happens when you, when you start uh, learning how to study photos and painting from reference photos. So again, burnt umber, dioxazine purple, neon orange, white, and blue turquoise, a little bit of each. And then I'm just gonna start going over, see how pretty that shade is? Rather than just doing black and white for a gray, which can be very dull, flat, and boring, not in all paintings, because I do uh, paint a lot in uh, grayscale. But for my colorful paintings, I like to make more interesting shades rather than just using black and white for uh, shadows. Okay, so I'm just gonna pull this along 
little scumbo. Just here and there. There's actually very little um, blue sky showing in the photograph. Okay, so that's pretty dark. I'm gonna bring that up a few shades lighter. So we've got the main pretty patch of blue sky here and then a little bit in between. And it's also peeking through these clouds. These aren't super solid clouds. Well, no clouds are solid, but um, they're not totally opaque, I guess is the word that I want to use. They're a little bit slightly transparent, so you can see a little bit of that pretty blue sky underneath. Now I'm going to add some down here in the water as well. We want to just um, really include all the colors of the sky in the water. We're not going to see all the buildings, thankfully, otherwise we could be here for days trying to <laughs> finish this painting. Um, they're not reflective in the water with a perspective and angle that I took the photo. Um, just the sky and a little bit of the canoes and the greenery around and the palm trees. Okay, so we're just adding a little bit here. Then what I'm going to do is come in with white and a little bit of, ooh, a little bit less. That neon orange is very saturated. That's why I love those paints, the Holbein neon paint so much. And now I'm going to start coming in. Now you can turn your brush over and create these little circles Let's add a little bit more white there mix up some more paint and then we'll just start adding there's a few ways to apply this next layer of clouds. So I'd like to show you guys a few different ways to approach things in painting. So it gives you some options because one way doesn't work for everybody. It's like that with everything. Everybody kind of just learns in a different way. Certain things are easier to understand than and grasp than others. So basically what you want to do get rid of that little piece of dried paint um, basically what you want to do is just add a little bit of this along with everything else it's all the other colors going on so we're going to come up right here right in here in this beautiful blue patch just come around it and this is going to enhance that little bit of lavender smoky lavender color that we've got, right, instead of just using plain old gray. Now I'm going to pull and just drag my brush across the canvas in some spots to create more of those stretched out, flatter looking clouds. And then we'll go back right here and add in some little pushing, just pushing and I mean, I'm not doing anything delicate or fancy. I'm not being too careful. I'm just adding these little half circles and then doing it quickly without letting my brush off the canvas. And that's the easiest way to do it. Don't hesitate. Don't take too much time. 
that's when you start to second guess yourself and try too hard. The worst way to paint clouds, I guess I would say, is trying to paint clouds. When you're trying too hard, spending too much time, overthinking it, overpainting, overworking, and you're left with something that just sticks out of your on your painting. And I tell you guys, just try a little less. Be a little messier and freer and looser with your brush, and you're going to like your clouds a lot more. Remember, this is all part of the background. Once we've added everything else, you're not going to notice the clouds so much. Okay, so now what I want to do is come down here, turn my brush over, because we're painting it in reverse, right? It's a reflection in the water. So what we see up here, it's going to be mirrored. And then we'll add a little bit more of that peachy orange color with the grayish lavender color. I'm going to bring it over here. Kind of looks more like a smoky tan color. I'm going to do is start applying uh, the background, dark background to begin painting our little houses, trees, and the hedge that goes around. So it'll go here then come out here on an angle. I'm going to show you guys how to create a really neat perspective in this paint that's going to be super simple. So just follow along step by step. If you feel overwhelmed, like you can't keep up, watch the video again. Stop pause, rewind as often as you need. So no one's saying that you have to paint along this speed with me right now, okay? You can watch it a few times to kind of grasp and pick up something a little bit new each, each time you watch it. And then, like I said, just pause and do each step one at a time. I'm gonna be using uh, my filbert brush and then I'm gonna go down to a smaller flat brush to just work on the angle and shapes, basic shapes, and block in some houses in the background. So I'll get my brush a little bit wet, and I'm gonna take my phthalo green, dioxazine purple. Uh, let's take a little bit of that light olive green too. Let's see how we get this really deep, dark, beautiful shade. And I'm gonna start I'm going to go halfway down the canvas, just for this area, because I, I know I do say don't cut your landscape perspectives in half. Just this area is going to go the halfway mark, but then we're going to bring up the um, houses higher. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more here. And I'm going to start pushing and tapping for some background trees before we add our houses. And I'm going to, you know, end up going over some of these clouds. I know, but that's okay. That's all part of building up from background to foreground. Okay, I'm going to take some more of that purple and I'm just going to start adding some triangles rectangles and squares okay so a triangle right here and 
go add a square here. No, I will be going over to my little flat brush eventually. We're still just blocking in at this point. We're going to bring in a stretched out triangle here. Make some more paint. Mixing up that green, both greens and the purple. Add another rectangle there. Gonna bring this up slightly higher and then across. Okay, and then we're gonna have some more little bushes back in here. Another stretched out triangle. A rectangle here and some more trees and bushes here and then the next color I'm going to take well colors a little bit of light olive green and my yellow I'm just gonna tap 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 you can use any brush you can use a mop brush for this if you want just soften these trees And then I'm going to just rinse my brush out. I'm going to go back to my first dark color, greens and purple. What I'm going to do now is go right from here. We're going to add a little point right there, about two to three inches in from either side. Then we're going to go all the way, not down to the bottom corner. I'm just going to paint this triangle in. We're going to have that hedge come here, like I talked about. And then this one is on a different angle, comes out here. So this one goes down here, and this one's angled higher up. We're going to go ahead and paint that little triangle in. I'm going to pick up some of the light olive green and I'm going to pull from here off that purple and go up and down just to start working on the reflection. It should be a little lumpy looking like that. And then you can pull side to side so you get these little notches that come out. We'll do the same thing. A little bit more of the purple right down here. Sometimes it's easier just to turn it sideways, 
push that, wiggle, 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 dragging it across. I pick up a little bit more purple. And go in between there. Because we want this to be just a little bit darker and denser for that front hedge. And then I'm going to go across, make that a little bit more streamlined. But then when we come in now with the yellowy green, I'm going to gently pull and flick off of that. Again, turning it sideways with a little wiggle, dragging cross. And a little bit more of the yellow green. Add a few little lines here and here. And then pull down just a little bit extra light olive green right here. And then a longer blobby reflection right here. We're going to make these a little bit lumpier looking for those bushes and houses in the background. Just shapes. We're not going to be reflecting all the details in the houses. Okay, and then I'm going to come along here. Wiggle, scumble. All the way down to the bottom right corner. Get a little bit more paint on there. I'm going to slide up and down diagonally on an angle. A little bit more paint, make it a little bit thicker. And then a little bit this way, up and down, and then across. I'm going to take a little bit more, both of those greens, a little bit of purple, go over top, a little bit more purple now, and right here. We want that to be where it separates from the trees, the bush of, or the, the hedge and the water. And then right here. Okay, so we've got a basic outline here now. Walking in, I'm just going to come over with a little bit more purple there. Now we're going to have um, some shadows in the water from this house here, just a shape. Just uh, take a little bit of purple, light olive green, a little bit of water in your brush. You pull out a few little lines. And then, because it's going to be upside down in reverse, right, for how it reflects in the water. Most people know that. I just like to mention it because um, some people don't know. And it can be a little confusing, so I just, a little reminder. And we're going to have a boat reflection right here. So all you're going to do is just start up here and paint a little 
scoop, a thin scoop like this. And then we're going to gently pull out a little shadow like that. Well, you'll be able to see it better once we add the actual canoe. And then we've got another little canoe up here. A few more little red ones up there, which we'll just add a little line right there. And then I'm going to take a little bit of orange with my purple, a little bit of white orange and purple in there. I still got a little hint of that green. And then we've got a canoe on an angle here, and I'm just going to do the reflection. So the reflection is going to go opposite of the canoe. The canoe, actual canoe, will go up like this, so it reflects in reverse down below. And it's like, because it's uh, a dark shadow reflection, it's going to be um, off colored like this. So the actual uh, orange we'll be using will be a lot brighter. I'm going to go into a little bit of white, my light olive green, just a little bit with a clean brush. And I'm going to start tapping in some softer tones here. Set these a little bit further back. Things in the distance should be a little bit lighter. Okay, then we're going to come in with our hedges. I'm going to use light olive green. And I'm going to go just add a little line here. Okay, everything back here is going to be the little houses and trees. Then over here, and it's going to get wider. This is going to give us that perspective of things getting closer to us. Then as we get closer, I'm going to turn my brush this way. Tap it up a little higher here, bring some height, and then it's going to get narrower and narrower so it looks like it's farther away. Then I'll turn my brush to the side and tap along this way. All right, let's head over to the other side. So we actually can see that this hedge goes way back there. Not on this side, however, just on this side. And then we've got another one across, right? Because the canal goes in between these. So we've got a little skinny line here for this hedge that goes across. And then it comes in here. And just gets a little bit wider. It's not getting closer to us because it's, it's still, it's over there. So we're really probably standing, I'm probably standing more over here when I'm taking the picture. Okay, let's take a little bit of white and bring this green up a few shades so that when it does dry, you can tap a little bit in there too. When it does dry, it'll be uh, bright enough because um, if you don't know already, acrylics dry a little darker, especially when we're adding this over a darker base, such as the dioxazine purple green base that we first applied. So that's when you're going to need to add a little bit more white. I 
add a little bit more here in the water under where the canoes are going to be. Okay. A little bit like that, a little bit here and there. Just a little bit right here. Two little brush strokes like this. I got a really small flat brush here, uh, number four, but just choose something small that you feel comfortable with, okay? And I'm gonna get my brush a little bit wet. We're gonna start over on this side, and I'm gonna take some white with a little bit of green and a little bit of orange. And I'm gonna come inside I'm gonna leave the roof line dark we've got a window so I'm gonna block in the window I'll go around and leave a little square there paint this in And then come down here and add a little strip. Okay, then I'm going to add a little bit more orange and green, a little bit of burnt umber. And I'm going to add A line here and this rectangle right here. I'm going to add another little roof line right here. A little bit of brown inside that window. Pick up some red, a little bit of purple. I'm going to place my pinky here on the edge of the canvas and I'm going to come down, bring that on an angle. Bring the window down. Frame it in. I'm going to add a line right down the middle. And one right here. And one across, another line here, a little bit of red and purple again, and we're just going to tap, 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 a little bit more red this time, turn the brush the other way, use the corner, tap for some little tiles. Right here on this roof line and a little bit of red right here this yard has um it's hard to see because the photo is not in high resolution i didn't have a, gr a great camera back then but i'm just going to block in wherever i see red i'm not sure if these are bushes or if it's some type of um, um painted concrete a wall I'm not sure anyway so I'm just gonna add a little bit of that and a little bit on this side right here just adding red wherever I see it and then I'm gonna come in with some purple inside underneath the roof line a little line like that another one like this and then we're gonna paint that inside nice and dark I'm going to add a few little 
brush strokes down here. So we get a little bit of a reflection. Okay, rinsing my brush out. I'm just gonna take a little bit more now of the light color and come inside. Add just a little bit inside the window. And just pull across there. Okay, now I'm going to come in and start adding, without washing my brush off, some purple and red. I'm going to add, I think this is the chimney right there. Let's do a long rectangle like that. Then we're going to go across the top, down the side, I'm going to block in some windows, a smaller one here, a larger one here. I'm going to add a little bit of orange to warm this up. It'll change the tone. It'll be less pinky, less cool. And then we're just going to add a few strips, just blocking in. It's, it's super easy. And a little bit of red right there. Washed my brush out. I'm taking just straight purple now. This is why I like to use a flat brush because you can get in and add these lines. Little diagonal, slightly diagonal there, and then across. A little, little dab. And make sure you guys, you have to know, you've got to know that you don't have to paint every single line where I'm painting mine. These are all just little suggestions. You can make your windows bigger, darker, lighter, smaller. Add a few little dabs along the top. And then there's going to be a little opening right here. I'll pick up a little bit of light olive green, mix that with my purple. So we know that we can enter right there and go into this house area. This little neighborhood. Okay, moving on to the next house. This one I'm going to go back over to my orange, green, and white. Add a little bit of blue turquoise in there. It's kind of a muted turquoisey uh, color. And we've got a chimney right here. So just a little skinny rectangle. Add a few lines for the side of the house. A roof line that comes down pretty low. Diagonal, diagonal, cut across. Go up a space, cut across. Cut over just under the dark line. And pull down to paint that in. It makes a difference what angle you paint your roof lines on to make them look 
um, proper. It'll look, it just makes a difference in helping it look more like it's laid in that direction. And then I'm going to come in at a line, a line, and then two more lines down here, leaving some windows in between. And then there's a little railing in there, but it's so far away we don't really see it. Now the windows up top are not super dark. Like these ones on the bottom are darker and we'll cut those in. We'll come in in a little bit with those. What I do want is to lighten the color of the roof. I want it to be peachy because it is in the photo and also it'll just blend in it's blending in too much to the sky being blue. So right now we need to make this stand out a little more. So I've washed out those light colors. I'm going to go to my purple, a little bit of phthalo green. Get my brush nice and flat and skinny. We're going to go over these lines again, the roof line, make that stand out, go over the top. So now we can see that better and it doesn't look like it's part of this blending into the sky. Make some bigger windows, add a line here, a line here, and just graze over the chimney, and then add a few more lines on the side of the house. I'm going to take straight white, and I'm going to add A white frame inside of the windows. You really want to flatten out your brush to get straighter lines. So just a few little lines like that. And then I'm going to go into my blue turquoise phthalo green. And I'm going to go over, jump over here where we've got a darker house. And I'm just going to add a little bit of that color. This one we just don't really see a whole lot just a little bit here in the water and then purple and we'll cut in the roof line I'm going to go across this time and not because we've got some uh, trees on the roof line bushes moss so we're just gonna give that a little outline go across leaving a little bit of blue visible Okay, then I'm going to take some tinted white. You can choose whatever color you want. I've just got a little bit of orange. And I'm going to go right over front little roof line for a veranda and then add some posts right there. I'm going to take a little bit of light olive green and I'm going to add a little bit over top of that as well as the roof line.
then just add a few little bushes and dabs here and there. I'm going to take some purple and my greens and I'm going to push and tap for some little trees and bushes in front of this house. And some right in here. Take a little bit more purple. Now I can go over this and make it darker. that purple light olive green again got a little square right here and you'll see why in a minute rinse my brush off go back into my any tinted white this is a little bit of the orange flatten out my brush and Right in this area here, we've got a darker house. It's like this dark green that I added. And then a front window that just comes across like this. And then we've got a little house kind of back in here. It's not very visible. We'll just block it in in between this one and this one. It's right here. Take a bit of that purple, olive green. Add a little peaked roof. Go over part of that light orange. Take a bit of the purple, olive green again. Come in with a roof line. A few little windows. And then dark underneath. Push and tap for some bushes. Pick up a little bit of light olive green. Tap, tap, tap. Clean brush, flatten and wiggle into some brighter white. We're going to add a few little lines here. Tap, tap, tap all across. There's a deck with a railing back there. Okay, so there's a little turquoise door. And you guys can use any turquoise you want. So it's the front door is right here for this house. Just a skinny rectangle. And then it's got this orangey red overhang little roof line right there. And we've got some Flowering trees, maybe bougainvillea. We're going to go on to our next house, a little orange, red, and white. And we're going to go across here, down, little line. This top will just block in our windows. Okay, a little bit more with white this time. A 
more white, a little bit of light olive green. Again, block in, leave some windows, dark spaces, the dark base that we used first. That's what it's for. I'm gonna take a little bit of red, orange, purple, and green. I'm gonna cut across right here. And then all in here is pretty much just um, trees and bushes, so I'll just go take my green and purple again, mix that up, still just using this little flat brush, just tapping, leaving a little bit of uh, dark purple there exposed. I just want to tuck these little houses in, put them in the distance, so I need to add these bushes and trees in here. Now there are some um, little umbrellas, little white umbrellas. So I'm gonna take some white and I'm gonna add a little line here. Then a really flat triangle. There's another little one right there. And then there's actually a little opening closest to this canoe. So it's in the middle of the canoes, but closer to this side. So it comes right down here. We're going to just pull across a skinny rectangle and then I'm going to get more paint, more white on my brush, flatten it. I'm going to add all these little lines. They slightly come up higher on either side. Then we're just going to add a little slight reflection in the water. Leave a space and then do your little line and then all the other little lines. And then I'll go back over to my purple light green and we'll add a little opening right here. Okay, so there's the opening. So you come through here and then you can load into your, there's probably a little tiny dock here and you can load into your canoes. So we'll start painting um, our canoes next. I'm gonna to continue to use this little brush and I'm gonna take some red and right here, just a skinny little triangle, or not a triangle. <laughs> we'll paint like a shape of banana. Then I'll take a little bit of white and orange and just go over the top. Do the same thing there, except in reverse. So I did the light orange. And then I'm just gonna come in with a purple here. There's a little red dock that comes out right here. So I'm gonna pull that out. Add some red, a little bit of purple along the side. A line and a line diagonally. And then our boat, we're just gonna go cut across like that. Clean brush, some orange, white, and red. Gonna go across, paint the top in, leaving the edge purple.
Gonna paint inside the boat. Gonna take some red. And I'm gonna come around the edge right here. Skinny at the top, push a little harder and scoop down. I'm going to add some, whoops, <laughs> almost lost my brush, some posts here on either side. I'll use a little bit of purple, blue turquoise, and a little bit of white. And we're going to add, I can see one on either side. So just from there to there, and we have a little line here. And then a few other little lines, probably just like little railings. And then I'm going to add a little purple to the roof line above the door. A little purple here. Inside the window, I'm going to add a little dab, dab there. I'm going to go along and just see wherever I can add a little bit more color. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is add a little bit of white. This is actually tinted with a tiny bit of light olive green. And I'm going to come around, scoop like this, and then just add a little outline. For the boat. Take some purple, a little bit of red and orange. Come inside here. Add a shadow on the inside of the boat. Pick up some more red. And then add just a little bit of a reflection in the water. I go over to purple, greens, Add some more shadows along the side here. You can see these posts here. That's what these little lines are for, as well as the roof line. And add a few little lines along here for our hedge. And we're gonna add a turquoise boat. blue turquoise, phthalo green, and white. A little bit on the tip of your brush to work with. Up on either side, on an angle, pull, and then up again. Take some white. Get the top inside and then wiggle wiggle a little bit side to side
clean your brush off, take some purple, outline, wiggle a bit for shadow, clean brush, some more white, and I'm just going to go over this little area here, making it brighter than the bottom. Tap across, up and down, corner of my brush, a little blob on the top for maybe some posts. And then we've got our little umbrellas there. Might be able to see just a little bit for reflection and a line. I'm going to take some more orange, white, and red. This will make it nice and bright without looking too pink. You've got to add the orange with the white and red. Then I'm going to take some purple and red and go right underneath, flatten that out. And then there's just, I'm not really sure what's over here because I can't see, but I'm going to add it anyways. A few little dark purple green lines. And then I'll just add a little dab up and down, a little bit over like this. I'm not sure, again, like what they are, but I want to add it because I think it does add something. And you'll see it in the reference photo. There's a little white, white little dabs here, a few little lines. Okay, let's go back over to white and orange. I'm just gonna add a little highlight again on the inside of this area of the canoe. A little line across and then I'm gonna go on the top again. Here we can start working on our canoes down here. I'm going to add purple. Right off the canvas. Diagonal line like this. And then some more right here. I'm going to start on this side with a turquoise one, blue turquoise, phthalo green and white. This one's a little square on uh, either end and then it gets a little wider. And I'll take a bit of white, mix it in with a turquoise, catch the end of the boat, pull a few lines across like this, then white, and just a few lines. Rinse your brush out, take some purple and blue turquoise, 
little bit of green, phthalo green that is. Add a line inside and around the side of the bow right here. And then just let off right there. Okay, the next boat. We've got some orange and white, a little bit of purple, a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, and we're gonna make this one longer. Slightly go over the other boat. We're gonna paint them how they're layered up back there to the first one over here. Then white on the edge of your brush. Little white triangle right there. You just want to outline the edge of the boat, add some diagonal lines like this, a little thicker one right there. Okay, and then we're going to take some more phthalo green, go right on the outer edge, bring it down, scoop and loop, and take it across. I'm going to pick up a little bit of light olive green and mix that in. And then a little bit of purple. For some shadows. I just dried it off a little bit and I can come back and add some better highlights now that will stand out a little bit more. And I'm going to come in with the next boat, light, light, turquoise, more on the blue turquoise side. And I'm going to come right over part of that boat there. A little bit more white inside. Now I'm going to have to come over top of this and bring my shadow out lower. So I'm going to go down here, right from the corner, I'm going to go over with purple. Go over with purple first. I'm going to make it wider because I know I'm going to go, be going over with the orange after too. I'm going to bring this out. Go up into a point, curve and come down. Do the opposite down below, the reflection. I'm gonna take some orange and white. So it's gonna turn it brown.
Okay, then I'm going to take those colors again with a clean brush. I worked out most of the purple. We'll come down here. I just dried it off again. I'm going to take orange and white and I'll lighten the inside of the canoe up. Just pop out the front a little bit more. Get really close to where we had the purple outline. I'll take a little bit of purple, burnt umber, along with the orange and white in my brush. And I'm going to come right up the tip of the boat, bring this down so you're slightly widening it there. Other side. Then a little bit of white turquoise, a little bit of brown in there. I'm going to go back to my purple. And go over the reflection, make it a little darker now. Add a little bit more orange. Clean brush. White. I'm going to paint inside. Just get right inside that outline as close as you can. And then a little line right there. So it's like a little triangle, skinny one. Outline, loop, go around, outline, loop. And then we've got a little bench right there. And then a little line here and a little line here. Gonna bring up the green a little bit on this boat here. Just bring up that line. Back over to my purple, a little bit of burnt umber. Okay, now we can start working on the palm trees. 
And I'm going to be using the same brush. I'm going to take my purple and burnt umber. You want to have a little, little bit of water on your brush. You don't want to make them too watery, otherwise they're going to be see-through. And we've got partial, partially one here on this side. Goes wiggly like that behind the house. And then we've got another one that comes right about here behind the hedge in front of the house. And then another one right about here. Taller. Need a little bit of water. I'll pull that paint out. I'm gonna make them a little thicker right here, right at the top of the palm trees before we add the palm leaves. And then we're gonna have some skinnier ones. One there, one there. And then a few palm leaves. We can just see a little bit on this side. So I always just do an arch like this, pull and flick, flick, flick. Take some greens. I've got a whole playlist on how to paint tropical um, all sorts of kinds of palm trees and uh, using different brushes so um, you can really pick up a lot of tips that way and find what brush and style work best for you. I'm just going to go over this tree trunk a little bit right here, make it a little thicker on top. Okay, and again, a little bit thicker in the center where the palms grow out of. A little bit of water on my brush. Mixture of green and brown. And pull in a little bit of uh, that phthalo green, but not a lot. We just want to add a hint of sap green in there. And I've made that by mixing the light olive green, light olive green, and phthalo green will give you that. And then you want to mute it a little bit with the brown burnt umber. Okay, and then we'll move on to this one. We're just about done this painting, guys. Don't forget to leave a comment below in the comment section below this video. I appreciate hearing and reading all your comments. I want to make sure we have a little reflection in the water so it's going to go the opposite way it's going to come out here we're not going to really see the leaves so we're just going to have a little reflection of the palm trunk and then a little wiggly a little wiggly down there and then our other one
right about there. There's a few little uh, dabs of this purple and green in here too for reflections above. small filbert brush for these palm trees that are different ones and they're a little bit larger so I'm going to take both greens a little bit of that brown burnt umber a little bit more water and we're just gonna pull 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 all around get a little bit more water on my brush And a few little pushes and taps. So I love using the filbert brush for palm trees. You just push and tap and you get those little leaf shapes, palm leaf shapes so easily. Okay, let's mix up some more paint. the center and now we can start with this one and this one looks it comes down lower this one kind of goes in half like this but this one's more of a oval shape I'm gonna take a little bit of light olive green some of that in there and then water down my brush and paint a little bit and we've got another different one over here your standard palm tree more wispy looking up and over Gentle pulls and flicks with the tip of your brush. I'm a little darker inside. just take a little bit of white and have a little reflection here in the water a little bit more red and orange Add a few more dabs of red across that house.
little red up there, a little red down here. And there's I don't know, maybe some red flowers or some red stuff going on back there. I'm not sure what it is, but I can see it in the photo. Add some more orange. And I'm going to take a little bit of white warm up. A little bit of orange and make that light peachy color. Add a little bit more to the clouds back here. I'll just play up on the color here and there. So as I'm adding more of the peach up top here, I want to make sure that I add that down below as well. I'm going to add a reflection of the palm trees down here in the water as well. Add some brown in that green again. And everything's going to be a little bit messier and less detailed in the water, so make sure you're remembering that and not trying to mirror everything perfectly. So just using those same colors, painting it the same, just a little quicker and messier. The brown and the greens. And it's going to be a little bit darker. I'm going to add a little bit of blue, turquoise, and purple. Just to maybe play up on the color a little bit too for the water. And 
I'm gonna take a little bit of turquoise, light olive green and white. And another little ref uh, highlight, not reflection. And that boat back there. And then a little white line across on either side. Add a little bit here in the water. Then I'm going to add a little bit more blue right in this area because if I come in here and add a little bit more blue, which it is in the photo, the reference photo I'm working from, it's going to play on that red a little bit more. Close, close, close to the roof. Going to put just a little bit of purple in here. There's a little hint of purple there in the corner. I thought it might be kind of pretty. A little bit of light purple here, just a bit of white and the dioxazine purple is all I'm adding. Okay, this painting is all done. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. This was really relaxing, a little bit more work than in my uh, usual tutorials. However, I know you guys are all capable of doing this. I promise you, you can do this one step at a time with me and paint your own version of it. You can change whatever up, change up whatever you like and be sure to download the reference photo for free on Patreon. Thanks so much for all of your support, sending love and creativity out to each and every one of you. Take care. See you soon in another video. Bye.